What's up everybody, Estas here, and in today's video I want to go over arguably the most talked about topic in the personal finance and credit card community over the past couple of months, being the Apple credit card. I want to go over some pros and some cons about this credit card, talk about my opinion on the credit card, whether or not I think it's a credit card to add to your repertoire in 2019, and also go over some specs of the card to see whether or not it's a good fit for you. So if you enjoy this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It's greatly appreciated, and let's get right into the topic of today's video. So back in 2014, Apple announced what is known as Apple Pay. And Apple Pay, to put it in very simple terms, allows you to upload credit cards onto your iPhone through the wallet app, and you can go to places that accept Apple Pay and simply use your phone, scan your phone, and pick the credit card, whichever one you want, and pay for the product that you're buying with your phone. It's pretty, pretty awesome, right? And it wasn't until this past March that Apple actually partnered up with Goldman Sachs and Master card to create their own credit card, which obviously is known as the Apple credit card, right? And this credit card, guys, it's a titanium card, but honestly, you don't even need that, right? You don't even need the titanium card. You can order it if you want to, if you don't want to pay with your phone, but you can literally just sign up through the iPhone and have your credit card living in your phone. This obviously has some pros to it, and it obviously has has some cons to it, which we'll get into in a little bit here in this video. But before we do get into that, let's briefly talk about some specs of the card, starting out with the app itself. So the app itself, it's pretty cool. Once you open it up, you see a card on the top of the screen, and this card is color coordinated based off of what you're spending. So let's say you're spending more in the entertainment category, it's going to turn more of the color of the entertainment category, right? Let's say you're spending in, you know, food or things of that nature, it's going to turn into those particular colors. Also in the app, it shows you your current balance, where you're spending your money split into different categories, and when your payment is due. And speaking of the payment, an interesting thing is that your payment is always due on the last day of the month. So there's no confusion. I know a lot of other credit cards, and I I've had personal experience with this, the payments are due at various times. Sometimes it's the 24th of the month. Mine actually just got changed to the 8th of the month. And a lot of the times this may cause people to miss payments and honestly just cause a bunch of confusion in terms of people paying cards, especially with people that have multiple credit cards. So knowing that it's always going to be at the end of the month kind of provides a peace of mind for those people that are using using the Apple card. Now to get into what a lot of you want to know, and trust me, this is what I wanted to know as well. What is the cash back offered by the Apple credit card? When you're signing up for a credit card, you're typically looking at how much money can you make back on purchases? So you can make 3% cash back, and this is daily cash, which we'll get into in a second here, but you can make 3% cash back if you're buying anything from the Apple store, whether that's at a physical Apple location, apple.com, the app store, or iTunes. You can also get 3% cash back from places that have partnered up with the Apple Card and Apple Pay, some of those being Uber and Uber Eats, which is awesome, right? So if you're a person that, let's say, lives in the city and you don't actually have a vehicle of your own and you're Ubering everywhere, this could be an awesome credit card simply for Ubering. And let's say you don't like to cook, let's say you don't like buying groceries and you Uber Eats a lot, which is for those of you guys that don't know, you can order food through Uber and they bring it to you. This could be also a very, very good option for you as well. And another awesome thing about the credit card is if you shop at locations that provide Apple Pay, no matter what it is, you get 2% cash back on all of your purchases. So if you go to a gas station that has Apple Pay, if you go to BJ's, Costco, I don't know if they have Apple Pay, but I'm just saying in general here, you know, if you go to 
places that have Apple Pay and you use it, you get 2% cash back no matter what, which is very, very awesome. One downside about it though is if the location that you're at, let's say you're at a restaurant, let's say you're at a supermarket, a gas station, whatever it may be, let's say this place doesn't have Apple Pay and you use the physical titanium card to purchase, you're only going to be getting a 1% cash back, which let's be honest guys, that is not really competitive with some other credit card companies out there like the Capital One Quicksilver, which I personally have, which provides a 1.5% cash back on all purchases. So overall, I personally think the cash back is pretty solid, but it's dragging you into the Apple ecosystem as you guys can pretty much see, right? The card is on the iPhone. You get 3% cash back at all Apple locations and people that are partnered up or companies that are partnered up with Apple. They want you to be in this ecosystem. So if you're not glued onto your iPhone, let's say you have a Google phone or a Samsung, this obviously may not be the card for you. And let's touch upon that daily cash back that I talked about a couple of minutes ago, which is also another unique spec of this credit card. So when you make a purchase with the Apple card, the cash back that you receive, whether it's 3%, 2%, or 1%, this goes into a separate account in your wallet called Apple Cash. So let's say you buy something at the Apple store for $100, that 3% you get back, which is $3, it's going to go in Apple Cash. And with Apple Cash, this is very cool, guys. You can transfer that into your bank. You can use that wallet or really that, you know, account to pay off your existing credit card balances. And you can really just do whatever you want with that money. So it's very interesting the way that they set that up in terms of Apple Cash and how you can utilize the rewards points, the daily cash back to really benefit whatever you want, whether it's paying off your bill or just spending that money or really just doing whatever you want with it. So another thing worth mentioning about the Apple card is there's absolutely no fees. There's no hidden fees. There's no annual fees. There's no late fees. There's no foreign transaction fees, which is actually pretty good in making it a competitive credit card with some of these other cards, right? Like one card that I personally have is the Capital One Saver card. And this has very good cash back. You can't complain about that, but there is a $95 annual fee, right? $95. You have to do math in your head when you're signing up for credit cards to see, is that going to be worth it year after year with the cash back that you're going to be getting to justify having that card, right? And the fact that Apple has absolutely no fees, that's pretty good, right? That's pretty good, especially for a beginner signing up for this credit card and using it and adding it to their repertoire of cards. So the main cons about this credit card is is it's really dependent on the iPhone, right? If you're a person that isn't always depending on your iPhone, you kind of want to have a card that's in your pocket, in your wallet that you can pull out and get 2%, maybe 4% cash back, 1.5% cash back on certain things. This may not be the card for you because remember, these locations that don't have Apple Pay, you're literally getting a 1% cash back, which is not really competitive with some other cards that have 1.5% on all locations, right? And I'll have a list of locations on the screen right now showing you guys where Apple Pay is. So if you shop at these locations very often, this may be a good card for you to consider, right? So the main thing is that 1% and it's very reliant on the iPhone. So let's say you lose your iPhone, that's a pretty big pain in the butt. You have to lock your phone, get in contact with Apple, and it honestly may force you to not pay your bill that month. You might miss a payment. You might not be able to use the card on certain purchases and take advantage of those rewards points. So it's very reliant on the iPhone, right? That's one of the main cons in my personal opinion of this card. It is also difficult to use it for online shopping if you are using the physical card because the physical card, it's very, very sleek. It's only your name and the chip on the front, but there is 
no numbers, right? There's no numbers on the card. So if you want to shop on Amazon, if you want to shop on some other online retail, you're going to have to go in the app and punch through a bunch of different, you know, buttons to find what your credit card number is. And then you'll be able to punch that in to whatever online place you are shopping. So honestly, those are the main cons about the card and some of the pros of the card as well. Another pro that I forgot to mention is that there's real time fraud protection. So if you're using the card or let's say you lose the card, someone else uses it. Once they swipe it, once they, you know, put the chip in and buy something, an alert's going to pop up on your iPhone asking you if you recognize the charge and where the charge was made. And if it wasn't your charge, you, you simply click no, whatever, right? You deny the charge and the card's locked and then you end up getting a new one, right? So it's pretty cool how there's real time fraud protection. That's obviously very important important for any card out there that you are getting credit card especially so before we wrap up the video let's talk about my personal opinion on this card is it really worth it in 2019 for me personally guys I'm not going to be getting the Apple credit card me I don't really shop at Apple to be completely honest with you guys I don't really uber and I don't use uber eats which in my opinion if you're using those services uber and Uber Eats a lot, if you're buying things on Apple, iTunes, apps, whatever it may be, then this card is definitely worth purchasing or not purchasing, I rather using, right? You get 3% cash back on everything Apple and Uber and Uber Eats. I think that is worth it if you're a consumer, a heavy consumer of those products. And I honestly don't even use Apple Pay, right? Obviously, I know a lot about it. I'm an investor in Apple. I need to know about these things. And I did thorough research for this video, but I've never honestly used it in the past. And to be completely honest with you guys, I'm a bit more old school. I like having the cards on me and I like not relying and, and using the technology of an iPhone to pay, right? Because I'm personally really scared about losing the phone. I've lost my phone in the past, guys. I've broken my phone. I actually dropped my phone in the ocean once. And what if that happened? I didn't have my wallet. What am I going to do, right? I like like having physical cards on me and I guess you can make the argument if you get the titanium card in the mail you can do that as well as having it on your phone but then again I like cards that have more than 1% cash back in my personal wallet so for me is it worth it right now no let's say I go and get a new MacBook I get a new iPhone I might get the card just to get that 3% cash back or let's say I start Ubering more doing Uber Eats I might get it and add it to the the repertoire in that circumstance, right? But as of now, I'm not a consumer, a heavy consumer of those products. But if you are, this may be the perfect credit card for you. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I would love to know what you think down below in the comment section about the Apple credit card. Are you planning on using it? Do you already have it? I would love to know what you have to think. So if you found value in this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace out.